Hey friends, welcome to The Lab Elementary Online. My name is Austin and you picked a great day to join us. How many of you have ever been into a food and it just gushed all over you? Maybe it was an overstuffed taco or a juicy orange or a greasy pizza pizza. One of the ultimate gushy foods has got to be donuts. That feeling when you, when you bite into a warm powdered donut and all the white sugar and strawberry feeling just gushes all over you. Mmm, there's nothing like it. If you had to choose, what would you say is the best donut feeling of all time? Shout it out. Oh, good choices. Okay, now what do you think would be the worst donut filling of all time? Come on, shout it out. Ugh, those sound disgusting. When it comes to being filled with things, some are great ideas, some are not so great ideas. But thankfully, when it comes to people, we have access to the best feeling possible, God's love. This whole month, we've been exploring how incredible and limitless God's love is. It's kind of like space. Scientists have explored space for years and never been able to find the end of it. No one knows how big it is, how vast or how wide space is. And that's the same with God's love. To get us really thinking about this idea of being filled, I've got a challenge for you. I'm gonna put a picture on the screen that's filled with different space items. I'll give you to the count of 10 to try to count them. We'll see how many you can get right. Are you ready? Let's do this. Picture one. How many astronauts are in this picture? You have 10 seconds. Go. The answer was 13. Okay, next one. How many stars are there? 10 seconds starts now. The answer is 40, yikes, that's a lot of stars. Next, how many meteor rocks do you see? Go. The answer is 26. All right, last one. How many comets are there? Go. The answer is 16. Did you get any right? Nice job. Some of those pictures were filled with a lot of things. Too many to count in 10 seconds. When it comes to God's love, it's a similar thing. We don't just get filled with his love. We also get filled with his joy, his peace, his comfort, and especially his hope. Trust me, it's a lot. I don't know if you knew this, but Today is actually a special day called Palm Sunday. It's the Sunday before Easter, which is a time when Christians remember the day that Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey and people recognized him as their savior and king. Jesus brought hope to the whole world by rescuing us from our sin and restoring our relationship with God. And that is why our big idea is, God's love gives us hope. Can we say that all together? God's love gives us hope. Awesome. Let's go check out Palm Sunday's Bible story and I'll see you back here soon. God's story, Palm Sunday. So part of God's story happened on a day we call Palm Sunday and it begins like this. Remember how God sent his son Jesus to rescue us? Well, not everybody believed that Jesus was really God's son and the rescuer, but the ones who did believe in him did something pretty cool on Palm Sunday. It started just like any other day for Jesus. He was heading into Jerusalem with his disciples. But before they got there, Jesus did something surprising. He stopped and sent two of his disciples to go get a young donkey from a nearby village. He even told them exactly where the owner had last tied it up. They weren't sure why he needed the donkey, but they obeyed him. 
Kids, would you be willing to obey Jesus even if he asked you to do something you didn't understand? Anyway, when the disciples got back with the donkey, they threw their coats on its back like a saddle and Jesus climbed up. Pretty soon, the disciples saw why Jesus needed it. See, crowds of people came to the road and started laying coats and tree branches to make a path for Jesus. When this happened, many people recognized that Jesus was a king. Only kings came into a city like this. So Jesus rode the donkey like he was a one-man parade. And the crowds praised Jesus by yelling things like, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord, and peace in heaven and glory in the highest, because they believed Jesus was the rescuer. But remember how some people didn't believe Jesus was God's son? Well, they told Jesus to make everybody stop yelling. They didn't think Jesus deserved to be treated like a king. You know what Jesus said? He told them, if they keep quiet, the rocks will cry out. Well, the people who didn't believe in Jesus didn't like thinking about people or rocks praising him. And that made Jesus sad. He actually started crying. And not just crying, weeping. Here, the people were standing next to the rescuer they'd been wanting and waiting for their whole lives. And they were missing it. But even though Jesus cried, Palm Sunday isn't a sad story. Easter is all about Jesus' amazing rescue, and Palm Sunday is a reminder of just how special that rescue is, and how much Jesus loves everyone. And that's the story of Palm Sunday. So in case you missed it, here's the quick version. Jesus was traveling. He sent his disciples to get a donkey. People spread coats and branches on the road. They praised Jesus. Some people didn't recognize that he was the king. That made Jesus sad. He had come to rescue them. A few days later, he would show just how much he loves us. And that's a part of God's story. Hi there, friends. My name is Balloon Bob, and you probably guessed I love balloons! Name any item, any item, and I'll make a balloon for you. All right, what do you got? Did I hear someone say a dragon? All right, a dragon coming up. All right, you see that? Tail, wings, head, perfect! <laughs> Impressive! Well, in our story today, the people had waited hundreds of years for a savior, someone to rescue them from the cruel, oppressive hand of the Romans. When Jesus entered, that's what they thought he was gonna do. But Jesus had much bigger plans. He wasn't gonna save them from their enemies. He was gonna save them from their sins. Now, imagine this balloon is hope. For Jesus to come as the powerful king, one that would defeat the Romans and rule the people like they expected, the hope he gave them would have been like this. Man, that's what it would have been like. It wouldn't have lasted. Eventually, a new enemy would have come and the people would have needed saving again. On the other hand, for Jesus to come as a humble king and take the punishment for our sins and die for them on the cross, the hope he gave us was like this. Whoa, it's a hope that lasts, a hope to receive forgiveness and new life in Christ. Now that's the king we're celebrating. That's all for me. I'm Balloon Bob, and have a balloon-tastic day. Man, can you believe out of all the animals to ride into Jerusalem on, Jesus chose a donkey? <laughs> I would want an elephant or a T-Rex, maybe a horse at the very least, but Jesus chose a donkey. Why do you think that was? Because of the symbolism. See, horses symbolize power and importance, but donkeys symbolize peace and humility. Jesus wanted the people to know that he wasn't entering the city as a powerful king that was to rule over them and defeat all their enemies. He was entering as a servant king, one who was ready to lay down his life for his people. Because of Jesus' life, death, and sacrifice on the cross, we can be forgiven for all the wrong things we've done and experience the hope of new life with him. All we have to do is ask. 
If you've never made the choice to ask Jesus into your life, we want to give you that chance to do that. I'm going to say a short prayer, and all you have to do is repeat after me, either out loud or in your heart. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, I know that I've done wrong things. I admit that I'm a sinner, but I believe in you. I believe that you've died on the cross for my sins, and I just confess that you are Lord. You are the king of my life, and I want to follow you. I'm asking you into my life to be my leader and my savior and my king. And I pray this in your name, amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, we are so excited for you and we want you to tell someone about it. Maybe a parent or a leader at church so they can support you in this decision to follow Jesus. Thanks so much for hanging out with us today, friends. I hope you've had an awesome time and I hope you have an awesome Palm Sunday. We can't wait to see you back here, either online or in person for Easter. We have three campuses that you can check out. Visit hopecity.ca slash kids for info on a campus and a service time near you. We'll see you then. Bye. Bye.